Hey there YouTube, welcome to Big Mike Beard Wisdom. So today, we're going to talk about used car prices, and mostly it's going to be one of those things where right about now, and so nearing the end of January, entering February, is a great time to start looking at cars, because there's going to be some great deals kind of popping up. So in the springtime, is normally a good time to buy SUVs and trucks, because a lot of times people don't need them for the winter anymore, so they don't need them for the snow that they're worried about, they don't need them for, you know, whatever kind of reason they had them. And a lot of times those will come up for sale. And then also you get little deals on maybe some little cars and stuff like that that they've had in storage that when they go to take them out of storage, now they're having issues. <laughs> so if you Google used car prices right now, the world's kind of in a crazy state because with the semiconductor and chip issues and all that other stuff that's affecting brand new cars, used cars are kind of in demand. And it's just one of those things where cars don't last forever. Cars break down. And it's kind of like they're semi-disposable in the mentality that a lot of people have for cars. So you can kind of see here, it says Los Angeles among cities with the highest used car prices. Uh, secondhand cars, why are they so expensive when prices drop? And Kelly Blue Book is one of the first things that kind of pops up. So there's Kelly Blue Book and then there's like NADA that give you Blue Book prices. And those are kind of prices of how much your car should be worth, how much the car you're looking to buy should be worth, and what your trading value and stuff could be. Now, they're not always 100% accurate because a lot of times, especially for trading into a dealership, what they use to monitor is almost live from the auction prices. So if a car can't be sold at the dealer, it's sold at an auction. Well, if at the auction, you know, your particular car is doing horrible, you're going to get a really bad trade in. And if when Kelly Blue Book or NADA looked at it last and it was doing okay, and then something happened that, you know, maybe there was a big recall or something like that, then the auction prices could see a direct drop right away, in which case the dealership's trading value for you will have a direct drop, even compared to, you know, maybe the Kelly Blue Book price you pulled that morning and then walked into a dealership with. So, it's more of a general guideline, not always 100% accurate, but it gives you a good idea and a range for where things should be. And a lot of times, if you're going to buy a car, you need to be looking at why they're trying to get rid of a car. So in this current situation, like for me, I bought the Escalade because the Escalade runs on premium fuel, only gets about 15 miles per gallon. And I was thinking, I need... Uh, like a commuter car that runs on hopefully normal gas. <laughs> so like 87 octane as opposed to like 91, 93 and gets about 30 miles per gallon. So if we were to look at current fuel prices, that's where I got these numbers. So Googling current gas prices, you can see there's a nationwide average. So 336, I'm assuming for 87 octane, 371 for premium. And I just punch the numbers in in this situation. So basically, this is a pretty simple spreadsheet. I just have miles driven and then broke it down in 1,000-mile increments. I have currently, so the, the vehicle that you currently own, that you currently drive every day, the proposed vehicle that you're looking to buy, and then it becomes the new vehicle that you drive every day, and the difference in fuel. And this can be huge, but there's much more you really need to consider. The big ones that really stand out to me are insurance and proposed registration and plates. So if you're just adding on a new car, so you're keeping the current car or vehicle, and you're just looking for something new to add to the fleet, <laughs> Or to have as a backup vehicle or a new primary vehicle and use your old vehicle as a backup. This is what I kind of set this up as. So with the Escalade, we really burn through a lot of fuel. So you can see here at about the 10,000 mile mark, you, we would have burned through almost $2,500 in fuel. And currently over here, we have equals parentheses. A2, which is the mileage, divided by current average miles per gallon. So that would be this one over here for the 15. And then we close parentheses. That way this gets figured out first. And then we multiply that by the current fuel price. And 
that would be this cell over here, current fuel price. So that would give us, essentially, for a thousand miles, you should expect to spend about $247.33 for the Escalade. Now, for the proposed vehicle, I wanted something with, obviously, the cheaper gas, and then hopefully at least twice <laughs> the average miles per gallon. And we want to keep the Escalade because that's what we're driving the dogs around and stuff. Because Shadow and Bandit are pretty big boys. And I really don't want them in a small, tiny car. <laughs> Especially driving down the road or the highway. <laughs> so, we're going to be keeping our car. And then this whole thing is going to be adding on. So, you can see here, the proposed car would get about $112 per thousand miles driven. Now, you can punch any fuel price in here. So let's say it ran the same, and you can see the price has all changed. So it figures everything out as it goes. Let's go back to, I think that was the right one. So let's go back to 336. And then what I also did beyond this is that your insurance and your registration are kind of one of those really expensive things. and you could factor in tires and stuff like that into this as well, but that by then you had, you know you need to know what car you've got. <laughs> so for now, six fifty is a really good rough estimate for insurance, and then for Minnesota, I'm looking for a car that's older than ten years old. That way, it's the set price at about sixty bucks for registration and plates. If you got a newer car than 10 years old in Minnesota, normally they wind up hitting you with a percentage of the MSRP of the car. And it can be really expensive. I know like if you buy a brand new car, the first time you go to renew your tabs, it's going to be a couple thousand. It's a big shock. You're like, wait a minute, what the? So whereas as soon as it gets to be about 10 years old, it's way cheaper. But I've got these factored in over here. They're not named anything special. So really this could be just about anywhere. And then you could even in, add in like tires if you knew the cost of tires or if you had to do repairs on something. And then here's the proposed budget. So as we drive along 10,000 miles, the 10,000 miles corresponds with this one over here. So this is cell D11. So over here, for the proposed budget, I've got D11, that would be this difference, minus H6 plus H8. So H6 is this one, H8 is that one. So essentially, you're taking the difference in fuel economy, you're removing the additional costs, and you're able to see how much you wind up clearing at the end. So theoretically, if I went from the Escalade getting $2,473 that has to be spent in 10,000 miles to a cheaper car, or well, a more efficient car, that would only cost me eleven twenty dollars in gas for 10,000 miles, in fuel alone, I would have saved on paper $1,353.33. Now you factor in $650 in insurance for the year plus $60 in plates. That $10,000 or 10,000 miles that would have saved me $1,353 only really saves me $643. So you can kind of see that you kind of work stuff out and the more miles that you drive, the more gas you wind up saving in this particular arrangement. But once you get up to like this 20,000 mile range, you're looking at burning through a set of tires easily in about three years. So you may want to factor in, you know, cost of tires. It's all kind of up to how you want to figure it out. But let's say that you want to go the other way, maybe you've got a fuel efficient car that you currently have. And the transmission just went out. 
So now you're like, oh, this is bad. <laughs> Transmission went out. What do I do? And you're like, I, get, I have a tax refund. I can either go and fix it or I can buy another car, hopefully drive that around and then maybe get something else. Let's reverse this just a little bit. I mean, kind of factor into maybe you've already got a fuel efficient car currently and you're looking for something a little bit more sporty. So maybe you're going from a fuel efficient version of the car to a sportier, newer version of it that maybe has a turbo and requires high octane. So maybe they both get about the same miles per gallon, but you're going to wind up getting hit with a little bit more money in taxes and registration. So here you can see just the change from going to premium fuel from the normal like 87 octane. And you can see it's a pretty hard hit. So here and currently, the thousand miles of what it will be $112. Proposed, it'd be $123.66. Not a big difference. So in a thousand miles, you're looking at $1166 that you've lost in cost. But once you get into the, these bigger amounts, obviously this increase is pretty good, but at least for in Minnesota, this is where it's really gonna hurt. So depending on what year the vehicle is, if it's a newer one, especially with the amount of new vehicles that now run turbos and can run high pressure, and they give you that sportiness that maybe you want or you've been looking for because you've been driving a little old mopey car. <laughs> <laughs> around and now you want something with that with some go <laughs> but the plates are going to be a little bit more expensive because it's a little bit newer car at least here in minnesota so you're looking at instead of just losing you know 11 bucks every extra thousand miles you drive you're looking at at 10k you're looking at it losing about two thousand seven hundred sixty six dollars 20k you're looking at about 2883 that you're losing so it all kind of depends on what you're looking at and then again with 20k you're going to be getting a new set of tires soon and normally a sportier car that has like a performance turbo and requires fuel economy it's going to have more expensive tires so that's kind of where you know maybe you should be factoring in tires maybe you shouldn't but it's all one of those things where it's interesting just to kind of punch numbers in sometimes just trying to figure things out And again, for me, whoa, that's really expensive gas. <laughs> we went from the Escalade getting about 15 miles per gallon because it's got the big 6.2 V8 and then it's all wheel drive. And then I went with the Saturn Astra. Whoop. Which is pretty decent on fuel economy. It's a manual, so it's kind of fun to drive. I do kind of miss having something fast though. The nice thing is that it's older than 10 years old, so it's nice cheap plates. And you can kind of see that for me, I went up saving a fair amount of money, even though we still have the Escalade. So with something like this, you can kind of figure out how much you can afford to just pick up a new one. So if you're in a situation where you can't sell the old one for some crazy reason, it doesn't make sense to sell the old one or you love the old car because <laughs> that never happens oh <laughs> this is a great little thing to help you kind of figure out what you need and what you don't or what you can maybe budget in if you're handy with excel this is pretty simple to replicate if you have any questions feel free to drop a comment and i hope you guys enjoyed the video feel free to like subscribe and i'll check you next time